What's up guys? Welcome back to another video. Sad news, I just went to the flea market and the flea market is closed. So, but I was gonna be safe. I was gonna go in there masked up. Uh, you know, I work in a, an essential service field for work. So I, I mask up for work. I was gonna be safe, you know, go in the flea market looking like I'm Ted Kaczynski. You know, a month ago, if you tried to go inside a business masked up, you'd have gotten kicked out or the cops called on you, you know, especially in the inner city. They're, get out, get out, you know. And I've seen that happen many times of going inside of Baltimore City convenience stores. And luckily, I don't live in the inner city right now. But let's talk about stuff that we should be grateful for. Because I was just thinking with uh, the virus and the different countries having the virus, I think that it's good. I'm grateful that they're not using weapons of mass destruction, knocking out entire countries right now. That's a good thing. And, you know, if you think about it, I was thinking about this the other day. If you take a nuclear weapon um, and you look at it, what practical application does that weapon have here on Earth? I think there's applications in space for it, but not here. If the, if the goal is to preserve the health of the Earth, why would you use a weapon of mass destruction on anything? Because that would just damage the Earth even more. So maybe you could use it to blow out a meteor heading towards Earth, or maybe there's an alien, and the alien's uh, an invasive alien. They're gonna come here and take over everything. We use that nuclear weapon to knock out the alien, right? Something outside of the proximity of the Earth and the Earth atmosphere, you know? That's just interesting talking point right there. But I did watch the news, and there's an interesting side effect to this virus, and because people aren't, out and about and consuming resources like they normally do you know whether it be fossil fuels or whatever whatever you know plastics things like this there's like waters in certain regions in the earth that you can actually see through now they've noticed a reduction in emissions in the atmosphere i mean that, that's a good thing so part of me thinks that like this whole virus thing is just the earth trying to like fix itself as, as far as you know curving off the human population because you know we see that kind of thing happen throughout history not just with humans but with other species as well so i know this is a topic that can be pretty touchy and you, some of you guys might not want to talk about it but i do think it's kind of interesting and speaking of the virus i got a package in my p.o box the other day from france right i saw that uh that postmark on the package i was like oh my god i sent it off to uh, a couple a couple of you guys are uh, youtubers i sent you guys uh pictures and I, you know, i'm like should i open it and you know i opened it and i didn't get sick yet so i should uh, i should be okay um you know guys and I, you know because of what i do for a living i, I do want to speak to you guys and tell you that you know don't don't be afraid and you know, scared or panicked right now and are consuming resources because you're just taking those resources away from someone that might actually need them you know i can see if some of you guys are you know older viewers or younger or you have maybe uh, issues with your immune system i got a close friend that has, he doesn't have aids or anything but he has to take like an immune system medication because he like pretty much doesn't have one so i mean the virus could be really really bad for him and i really feel for people like that and you know because those are the people that are ultimately affected um you know by this thing so you know if there's anything i can do for anybody that's a regular on my channel you know holler at me our government you know here in the u.s anyway our government's supposed to there's like some kind of stimulus thing they're supposed to send out like a thousand or 1200 bucks to every american i guess people that work i don't, I don't know how they're going to do that but i remember they did this back and i think it was 2008 when bush was in office they had a stimulus package i think everyone got like 500 bucks i mean i didn't but this guy i was with at the time he i remember he got a 500 dollars check he was the food and beverage director of some fancy pants hotel down in uh it was the charles in uh downtown if you guys know what i'm talking about the hotel and restaurant but yeah, we took that $500 and pretty much partied with it. And I, that's what I remember. That's all I remember about getting a stimulus check. I didn't get one. Someone I knew did, he just hit me off. But yeah, so I got some video games to open. Um, yeah, this is just gonna be a video of random stuff. Uh, I just wanted to more than, more than anything else touch base with you guys. Um, you know, I wanted to be part of the community. I can't just stay shut in the house and not do anything. And these are my days off. My days off are Sunday and Monday. So right now I'm in my car, it's Sunday. Maybe I'll have this video out this evening. Maybe it'll be Monday morning. I don't know. I'm gonna get everything I got video game wise to show you guys. Sucks I would have more if I could go to the video game stores. Maybe I'll go out to Best Buy and see, because I heard they're still open. They're considered a essential resource for people that need the computer parts, I guess, to work from home. Um, and it's funny, because that's what Best Buy is doing. Best Buy, or not Best Buy, GameStop. GameStop is saying that they are an essential resource for people to work from home. And I, I mean, I guess if you need to consume physical media, 
I, there's video games to stay alive. I mean, I could see a use for them then, but right now, you know, no. I mean, if they're going to do more bad than good, you know, definitely shut down. I mean, I'm, I never want to see any business shut down, but, you know, it is kind of sad to see GameStop um, using its employees the way that they are right now. My God, it's horrible. You know, having to choose between your life and your livelihood, that's a... Uh, that's a hell of a choice to make for a business. That's ride or die with that business for real. Because my job, if they told me that, I'd, I'd peace out, right? You know, I've done it before to places. You know, I'm not going to let anybody walk all over me like that. I don't, I don't know. Too old. Maybe when I was a kid, but ain't nobody getting me like that now. But anyways, guys, let's open up some games. Okay, so when I went to my P.O. box, this was in there. And normally, when I order a game and it gets there, it's all good. But this one's from France, so, I, uh. <laughs> so Should I open it? Should I should I give it two weeks, marinate on the back porch, and then open it? Red Art Games in France. I forgot they were in France. Damn. Oh well, I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna go ahead and take my chances, guys. But I don't know. I thought you know if that if that's a low blow to what's going on right now, I apologize. I was just trying to make light of the situation. But, um, yeah, this is two games I ordered. I'm going to see if I can remember them right now. Uh, Gakito, Guitar's Revenge, and uh, Ice Cream Surfer. Ice Cream Surfer, there we go. Ice Cream Surfer. Um, I actually found out about this game watching Captain Algebra. Yes, Captain Algebra. He's got a great YouTube channel, and he's a, he's a, really, a really good player of uh, 8 and 16-bit games. So, yeah, check out Captain Algebra. He... Um, he definitely does a lot for uh, retro game. What I consider to be a lot for the retro gaming scene right now, as far as people that actually put you know forth action. But anyway, this is Ice Cream Surfer. Let's go ahead and crack this thing open and see if it comes with a manual. Nope, no manual. It comes with a disc. I mean, that's a good thing. And one of the discs was like rattling around in the case. I guess it wasn't this one, but it must be the other game. Um, anyway, other game. Gatito, Gatito, Guitar's Revenge. Um, there's a game in this series on the PS1 that's actually a pretty good beat-em-up. I'd, I'd consider it like a hidden gem game, actually. Um, and then this game came out on the Game Boy Advance. I never had that version, never never saw it anywhere. But I did hear about this, and, you know, some YouTubers have been talking about it. So I figure I'd, you know, give it a shot. Um, I have played, um, I've played this on the Game Boy Advance through an emulator, and it's, it's pretty decent, especially if you like old-school, you know, 8- and 16-bit style shoot-em-ups. Look at that. I got a copy of Darius Burst Chronicle Saviors like that where the disc was rattling around in the case. And I know it's a Blu-ray, but my copy didn't work. So, ah, uh, man. that See, a manual is great because it, it put just enough pressure on the disc that it keeps it locked in place. But anyway, uh, Gakito Guitar's Revenge. I've played quite a bit of this game at this point. It's decent. Um, but, yeah, both of these games were pretty cheap. You know, Red Art Games. And they got some other stuff that's mildly interesting listed on their site. Go ahead and check them out. These guys are some of the last games I picked up at the flea market before the place shut down, before the world went to shit, okay? So this is the first game here, Pop Cap Arcade. I, I've never played any of these games. Still to this day, I haven't played this yet. Blasphemy, right? I, was I tricked by the word arcade? You know, is this a really, really crappy game? Um, I guess these are exclusive to the Xbox 360. I don't know. But it looks like it's a compilation of games that maybe you could have ordered that were exclusive to Xbox through Xbox Live Arcade. You know, I don't know. I'm not a huge X Xbox guy. I'm sure friends of mine, you know, let me know in the comments uh, about this release right here. Um, I don't know. It looked like it could be like a fun shooting style of game. I don't know. But Taito Legends 1. Big fan of Taito Legends 2. A lot of great shooters on that game. A lot of hidden gems, let's say. Um there's a few on here too, and I watched. There's a guy I watch on YouTube, uh, Sega Lord X. He puts out some banging content. He uh, he was talking about some games on this game and Space Invaders Extreme. This is a cheap game if you can find it. These DS games are getting hard to find. Uh, this game kind of plays like a fun shooter. Not gonna lie, I love it more than the regular Space Invaders. It's for the DS, so you can play it on a new 3DS XL. But yeah, guys, these are just three games I found at the flea market one of the last times that I went. These are two of the last games I got at my local retro game store before the world went to shit. Now, it's at the point now at my local retro game store that if there's a shooter that comes in or someone trades one in, you know, they'll be sticky notes on them with my name because, you know, odds are, and they know if it's one I don't have, I'm probably going to buy it. And they cut me deals. I forget what I paid for this, but I remember I was texting Canadian Gamer. He said, I, I got a good deal. Um, this is a good shooter. I'm not going to lie. It kind of goes off of a charged shot. So if you use a Game Genie, it makes the game a lot more playable. But either way, 
totally recommend it. Uh, if you, I've never seen this one before. I've seen it shown off by other YouTubers, but I, I just now found a copy at 1942, classic Capcom shooter. And I got this uh, this pin adapter. That way you can play Famicom games. And I actually am going to use this on a Retro Duo little handheld device. Recently shot up in value. Why I have no idea because there's the Superboy that you can play. But I use a Retro Duo. I absolutely love the thing. And I'm probably going to do a separate video on the Retro Duo. As I see it's a device that you guys I don't know, would probably want to see. What in the hell? What this year? The hell does this come from? From Japan. Odds are this is a Japanese video game, but we're going to find out because I, I have no idea right now. This is probably something I ordered from a limited release company two years ago. <laughs> it's funny, you know, some of those limited release games, you know, they take a long time. Cosmic Star Heroin, almost a year. Uh, Vasara, uh, you know, every version of Vasara except for the Play Asia or whoever published it overseas. That Almost a year, damn near 10, 9, 10 months. I, was, I had a whole other career when that thing came out. But uh, yeah, this is packaged really well. What is this? What this is? This is... Oh, okay. I know what this is. This is a game for the PC. This is Castle of Shikigami. Or uh, Shikigami no Shiro. This is a PC version. This is a Korean version um, for the PC. Now, I've, I've got a few of these games. I got one for uh, Gun Force. I got one for... Uh, There's a couple other uh, Korean games I got um, that are like this that have a paper sleeve around them. I'm not sure if these are officially licensed titles. I mean, they have all the markings on them, but something tells me that these are just, I don't want to know, I don't know, high quality, I guess high quality reproductions. I don't, I don't know. Um, I've seen it where it's just running pretty much through a MAME emulator, um, which I, I guess it's cool. I mean, they're physical. I mean, you can play them without having to have an internet connection. So there's something to be said for that. Um, there's also something to be said for having full ROM sets downloaded onto a hard drive somewhere, which is something I probably should do i have some roms of games that i like but this is a good game and I, it, for the pc this was like 15 bucks or like 11 bucks or something it was really cheap but anyway castle of shikigame on the pc where i'm recording this audio the birds are singing chirping like crazy now there's some really cool birds that make some really cool noises out here in maryland Anyway, this is a PSP game that when I saw this actually released, and it released out here. This is an imported version, but it released out here, and it's still pretty cheap for the version out here. Power Stone Collection. Who knew that Power Stone 1 and 2 was released for the PSP? For the PSP. You know, I, I had no idea. Um, this is a cheap game. This was like $11 brand new. I, I'm going to open it. I'm going to open it right now. But, uh, you know, for $11, you can buy a new, both versions of Power Stone on one disc. I mean, come on now. And I remember I, I was texting Dan from uh, Rebel Game Club. He told me that, you know, yeah, two-player games, these are games that are the most fun in two-player mode. And I, I get that, but I, I still, I've played, I've played, I downloaded this game, obviously, and played it on my PSP already. But they're fun. This, this is good. This is good. It's $11 brand new. If you're a collector, you know, I should have just left this th damn thing sealed because I, I have the ROM downloaded. But um, anyway, this is what comes in at the manual and like a little other uh, Capcom games that are coming out or have come out. Probably mainly these came out overseas. I think those Capcom Classics collections came out um, over here. Um, I should probably collect those if I see them. But the PSP, you know, a lot like the DS, it's a system that's very hard to find games for, at least for me out here. I never see good PSP games. I see, like, the same old, like, sports games or, you know, whatever games, are, you know, mainly sports games everywhere I go. I never find good PSP games. And and when they do come come up, they surface out here, they sell out quick. And it's weird because like I feel like I'm the only person out here that buys or collects or plays PSP games, but when them good games surface, they sell, they sell for a lot and they sell out quick. So it's just crazy how the PSP getting is getting. But anyway, there's Power Stone Collection on the PSP. Here we have Bloodstain, Curse of the Moon on the Nintendo Switch. Now I'm guilty of owning this on three different platforms. But I played through and you know, finished the game pretty much on the PS4. Collector's edition of this game, actually, on the PS Vita. I have that. That's a game I have sealed, and then I have it downloaded on my Vita. You know, I might seem like a elitist-ass game collector when I talk like this, but, you know, I'm just I'm just saying I'm guilty of owning this on three different platforms, and I'm, I'm admitting it to you guys, and there's a couple of games that I, I do have like that. But, uh, you know, please try not to hang me from a cross. I'm just trying to be honest. But <laughs> good game, great game. Can't praise this game enough. I like it more than, um, I guess, Ritual of the Night. Curse of the Moon is love the graphics, love the gameplay, 
Love what they did here, the music, the bosses. I cannot praise this game enough. Um, of course, a game like this, I'm going to buy it on everything I could play it on. I guess except for the Xbox One because I don't have an Xbox One, but let this thing come out on the 360. I'm copping that shit. But strongly advise you, if you haven't played this yet, to, to play it. it. It's pretty cheap, I think, for every system. They made so many of these damn games. I think you could actually get this at Best Buy if, if it's still there. It should be pretty cheap. I bought this at a game store in my area. It was like 40 bucks, so, uh, you know. Anyway, Bloodstained Curse of the Moon on the Nintendo Switch. Here we have a quick unwrapping, unboxing of Code Vein. And you know, Bandai Namco, they put out .hag's U last Recode, all the Tales of games. This game looked like it had a fun action-based, timing-based kind of battle system. So, yeah, I played the first few hours of this game, and I'm digging the story on this one. So it looks like it's going to be pretty good. Anyway, to all the people that frequent my channel, hopefully any of you guys affected by this virus thing, hopefully you're able to get unemployment if you're not working right now. And if you haven't gotten unemployment, I urge you to, you know, probably you can do it online. I've, I've gotten unemployment online before, and, you know, I think it was like 400 and some dollars a week. So hopefully that's enough for you guys to survive off of. It certainly is for me. But, uh, yeah, it looks like this game doesn't come with a manual, but we expect that out of games these days. Anyways, guys, till next time, peace out.